Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to r slash pro revenge, where you'll hear stories about people getting what they deserve, and the stories are super satisfying. Guys, I hope you're having the best day today, wherever you are. And in today's episode, there's gonna be three stories. The first story, OP gets revenge on a restaurant owner for not paying him. The second story, OP tells a story about her mother, and we'll finish up with a story where an ex-army boss goes on a power trip and learns a valuable lesson of why you should never yell at employees. My friends, I do hope you enjoy the stories today, and do hit that subscribe button for future revenge stories. Let's dive in, shall we? A few years after I started my business, I was asked to clean up and optimize a number of PCs in multiple locations, as well as set up some forums and templates for a new client who owned a local restaurant. The work was performed over a space of a month due to scheduling conflicts and school holidays, but on completing the last of it, the client confirmed verbally that he was happy with all I'd done, and to go ahead and send an invoice. I emailed an invoice for a sum just in excess of £400. I waited for payment, but never heard anything. I sent reminder emails, called and left messages, but no response. Eventually, a couple of busy months passed and I met the client by chance at a local supermarket. On asking why he'd not paid or been in touch, he said that all the PCs were as bad as they'd been before I'd started, and that he had tried to contact me with no success. Now, I found that quite odd, as my phone was always with me and I checked my email inbox every day, so I knew he was lying. So I contacted a local debt collector, gave him the details and everything he needed, and he took them to the guy. On his return, his words were, he's not disputing the invoice, he's saying that the work wasn't done right, so it's his word against yours. Now, I asked him if it was worth taking the guy to small claims court, to which the debt collector said, even if you could prove that he confirmed he was satisfied with the work, they might insist you get his computers back to their pre-invoice state. Do you really want to spend more time doing that? Now, of course the answer was no, so I stewed it over in my mind and came up with a plan. At this point, it was late November, so I decided to make a fake email account as a female, and I got in touch with the restaurant to book a large party for Valentine's night the following February. I put it down as my husband's surprise 40th birthday party, and that I'd be willing to pay $10 per head. Of course, as time went on, the ideas grew arms and legs. The numbers attending increased until the owner suggested that he'd reserve the whole restaurant for the night, and they'd happily arrange the seating to suit us. But, could I ensure the deposit was sent ASAP please? Of course I confirmed that I was a scatterbrain, and that I'd ensure the check was with him very soon. To keep him on side, I also asked for a proposed menu in advance, so I could send it to all the attendees for pre-ordering. Naturally, they were delighted that they'd know this, as it makes their life easier. Consequently, the numbers for all three courses were emailed in, with a few very fussy eater variables thrown in for good measure. You know, to keep it realistic. Needless to say, by the beginning of February, he was getting quite antsy about there being no sign of the deposit. But I reassured him that the check must have been lost in the post, so I'd send another by special delivery. I also asked if they could ensure that somebody was there to sign for it. Now, I knew the owner lived about 25 miles away, and the restaurant did not open till 5pm, so he'd have to come in very early and hang around waiting for it. A few days before D-Day, he'd obviously had enough. He emailed in a spat, saying that they'd turned away numerous inquiries, had no deposit, and could no longer hold back on taking other bookings. This time, I didn't bother replying. My part was done. My wife and I were at another restaurant close by for our own Valentine's meal. And after, we decided to take a walk past the guy's business premises to see just two cars in their parking lot, one of which I'm sure was his. I'm not sure how much he must have lost out on that night, but knowing the prices, I bet it was significantly more than 400 pounds that I'd invoiced him. My friends, I absolutely love this story. So Valentine's Day is one of the busiest days of the year for restaurants, so OP can rest assured that he cost the owner potentially thousands of dollars that night. Absolutely brilliant revenge. He really should have paid that 400 pound invoice. So, a little backstory here. I did not grow up in the best environment. I've seen and been through some crazy things, so of course I have some wild stories. My biological mother is quite frankly one of the worst people on the planet. I've suffered a lot of mental trauma from her. She's addicted to math and is a Christian, but with a touch of insanity. She believes that she's a saint, yet she can't get the Bible right. 
For instance, I was originally supposed to be right-handed, but because of her deluded belief, she thought that that was the devil's hand. So, she put a sock on my right hand and forced me to write with the left, and would hit my right hand with a metal ruler if I tried to use it. I'm sure many of you know that the left hand is actually the devil's hand, ironically really. Luckily, the last time I ever saw her was when I was 10 years old. At 16 years old, 5 years after I'd been adopted, she found me on Facebook and I tried to give her a chance but she barely talked to me and never apologized for anything so I left it at that. I want to make it clear that we do not have a relationship. So fast forward some years, I've just turned 20 years old and I'm making my first big move. I moved several states away and went to meet my biological father and his side of the family and I agreed to work with him. They are amazing people. I got to live in a big city, have a cool but very dangerous job, and party with rich people on weeknights. I was living it up. My dad stood back, let me have fun, and made sure I was safe, all the while posting me on his social media. Now, my mother was on his social media, and she saw it all. After almost a year, I guess she finally lost it. I had no idea she knew where I was or what I was doing, because I didn't have her on any of my social media, but that all changed. She found my Instagram and sent me a private message, and what I would endure was enough to send me off the rails. The first message I got was her telling me about how much of an ungrateful person I was, that I ruined her life and that she should have killed me when she had the chance. She also said that I asked for and deserved everything that was done to me in her care. I of course defended myself, telling her that she doesn't know a damn thing about me and that she couldn't tell me what I was or what I wasn't, and that she was no mother of mine. Now, here comes the disturbing part. She accused me of sleeping with my own father, and I actually felt sick to my stomach having to read something that messed up. And this is when the anger finally took over, and I was out for revenge. I wanted to take what gave her value, and I know this woman better than anybody. She believes that what gives her value is having a man, and I took him from her. Yeah, I know it sounds bad, but trust me, it's not what you think. Let me explain. Because she messaged me on Instagram, I obviously had access to hers. Mine was private just in case she decided to re-enter my life. Hers, on the other hand, was wide open and I could do all the snooping I wanted. And that I did. I no longer had access to Facebook, but my dad mentioned that he did. So I did the obvious. I got on his account to see if they were friends, and they were, so I did some more snooping. I found out a few more things. 1. She had a boyfriend that she flaunted, and 2. He's got three beautiful little blonde-haired blue-eyed girls. They were all living in my deceased grandfather's house, and this is when my plan sets in motion. I convinced my dad to pretend to be an uncle that was worried about my mental health, and of course worried about the safety of those three beautiful little girls, which I truly did worry about. I worried because if she could do those things she did to me, her own daughter, who knows what she was doing with those three girls that weren't hers. I had him call the CPS department that handled my case. Surprisingly, after 10 years, they still remembered me, but more importantly, they remembered my biological mother. I listened in and whispered in my dad's ear the entire time. I had him play the uncle because I was afraid that if it was me and my dad against her, they would suspect collusion. So worried uncle was the perfect third party. And we told CPS everything. We told the person every disgusting message I got, and I could hear them typing it all into the computer. We also made sure they knew the fact that I went through a closed adoption, and that I get to decide whether or not I'd like a relationship with her. I clarified that I do not want that, so not only was she breaking the law by contacting me, she was also doing it in a harassing manner. After long talks about the messages, the lady asked my uncle if there was anything else she should know about. And this is where I took her man. I made sure my dad told them my grandfather's address, her boyfriend's name, and the fact that he has three little girls living there with her. We voiced our concerns about the safety of those kids, stating that she abused her own daughter to the point that the state had no choice but to take her one last time, to ensure the little girl's survival, and that she is not allowed to be around kids. To which CPS lady responded, You're right, she's not allowed to be around children. We'll be out to that location as soon as possible. The next day, all the photos of her boyfriend and his three little girls were deleted from all of her social media accounts. I spent 11 years in the system, so I didn't have to be there to know what happened, but in case you don't, I'll tell you how it went. 
a social worker showed up to the house, asked to speak to the father, to which they then confirmed him that his kids were at risk, living with my biological mother, that she's not allowed to live with any kids, and that if he did not vacate his kids from the property immediately, they would be forced to take them into protective custody. He, like any good father would do, left that day with his children. The good news is, she hasn't contacted me since, and the best part about this is, that I know that she knows that I'm the one that messed it up for her. I took what gave her value, and there's not a damn thing that she can do about it. Wowza guys, I'm still trying to process what happened in this wild story. Not only did OP get the revenge on her mother, but she potentially saved the boyfriend's kids from suffering the same trauma that she went through. Brilliant pro-revenge. So this happened around 2016. I had been without a job for a while, looking for a better paying one than I had before. And then I found one at a camera security company that was looking to hire somebody for a service desk. I went for an interview and got a call back later that day. If I wanted that job, it was mine. Now, my new manager was an ex-military, specifically ex-army. He really did not like having people disagree or going against him. A thing I was very unaware of when I took the job. For about two to three months, everything was going well. The manager was cordial and seemed to really enjoy having me there, and I worked my butt off every day. However, after that period, my grandpa was suddenly hospitalized after having an aneurysm. Now, this all happened on a Wednesday. The family came together in the hospital several times to show support and to see grandpa. However, on Friday afternoon, 3pm, I was called up by my father while I was at work, and he explained to me that grandpa unfortunately had passed away. I was in tears on the phone and in utter shock. It took me a while to calm down. I went to my manager and explained what just happened and that I'm gonna have to go home to be with my family. However, that day, there was a special event. The company was doing a charity event and this charity was gonna be public news. They already announced the amount of people participating and it would look bad if there was a person down. It was basically just good for PR, so he refused to let me go. I told him that by law, he can't deny me as my contract states that I can take a day off for death in the family and that I was leaving now. Now, this was the turning point. He went from being a nice manager to a manager from hell. Suddenly, everything I did was wrong and he cussed me out and ridiculed me in front of my colleagues and even clients. This all continued for several months and severely began to impact my mental health. I had a talk with my parents and my fiancé and they basically told me that this was not okay, that I didn't have to take this and that I should give him my two weeks notice. So I agreed. The following day, I went to HR and explained why I was leaving the company and that I couldn't stand the idea of working a single day more with that excuse of a human being. HR showed interest in my well-being, and even more importantly, in what I was claiming about my manager. They had received more complaints about him, but nobody had proof of his wrongdoings. So they asked me if I had proof. I told them I'd been looking for a new job, but I'll gladly fit in the time to collect all I could. So for the next two weeks, I collected everything. Memos, emails, voice recordings, etc. And the idiot was stupid enough to cuss me out while I had him on speakerphone and was talking to a few coworkers. I was lucky that my colleagues at the desk had my back the entire time. They'd been trying to cheer me up, said I was doing fine work, and they also didn't understand this man's behavior. So when I came by and asked if they'd mind signing a document that everything I stated in the paperwork was true, they gladly did. I had one last talk with HR and him at the same time the last day I was there. Before he even walked in, I told the HR person who was mediating that he's gonna walk in, say what he wants to say, and I'll be quiet and listen. When he's done, I'll explain my side and he's gonna interrupt me, tell you that I'm lying, and talk about a completely non-related subject matter to drag the conversation in another direction. She looked surprised at my comment, but had no time to respond as Mr. Army Man walked in and began his spiel. Exactly as I stated, he'd blurt his side out and once I tried to talk, he'd consistently interrupt me and tried to pick fights. Eventually I got up and told HR, I told you so, here's the documents you've been asking for. I placed the file folder with several dozens of emails, plenty of memos, and a USB containing three phone conversations and even video footage of him yelling at me. I gave the manager a bright smile, who was smirking victoriously, and said to him, I don't think you'll be smirking like that for long. Enjoy your little victory. His smirk disappeared into a confused scowl, and I left before he could respond and left the building feeling like a huge, 
and I mean a humongous, planet-sized amount of stress fall off my shoulders. Within a month, I was back to my old self. Two weeks later, I was working at a new job, when out of curiosity, I checked my ex-manager's LinkedIn. Unemployed. I called one of my old colleagues to ask exactly what went down. My proof opened up Pandora's box. He was being disrespectful to the female staff, insulted the older staff on multiple occasions, and was less than cordial with our external hires. None of these complaints were acted upon because it was his word against theirs, and there was no proof. However, me providing overwhelming proof of his gross behavior towards me made all of the other complaints now be taken as fact. He was promptly fired less than a month after I left, and they refused to provide him with any form of reference. In a field like his, references do mean a lot. So not getting one from a company that you worked at for nearly a year is a huge red flag. It's now 2020, four years past, and according to his LinkedIn, he's still not working in his field. Another prime example of a person getting put in a position of power who let it get to his head. The fact that he didn't let OP go home after finding out that their grandfather passed away is terrible. I would have quit right then and there. This story reminds me of the saying that I once heard, that people don't leave jobs, they leave bosses. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash pro revenge. Guys, if you enjoyed the stories today, do hit that thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode, a Karen freaks out at an employee because the store ran out of meatballs for her sandwich. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you. Oh, and please do check out my editor's Twitch channel if you have time. I'm currently paying him peanuts and keeping him in a cage in my basement, and I promised him I'd set him free if he gets some more lovely people to watch him stream. So yeah.